Welcome to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Each week on this program, Jeff and his guests share their expertise, personal anecdotes, and the latest industry news to keep you in the loop. Now to provide you with insight and help you navigate the consistently changing world of real estate lending, here is your host for The Mortgage Voice, Jeff Barton. Welcome back and welcome. This is Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show. Each and every week we come to you, we bring you information on mortgages, we bring you information on the real estate world, what's happening in the major economies around the world and how it can affect you and your desire to either get a refinance or get a mortgage. Yes, there's a lot going on. If you want to see and hear us, go to YouTube. We're on each and every week. I have a YouTube channel there called Jeff Barton, The Mortgage Voice. And if you go there, sign up, say you like it, tune in, say, give us some feedback. Reason is, we have a lot of different people that come and hear the show in a bunch of different markets. And the more we get you all to uh, participate, the better it is for everyone, because then, obviously, my signal gets to more people. And that's what the... Uh, purpose of the show is is to get the information to you this is information you cannot get on your own unless you do the kind of research that i do each and every week as well as you know historically we probably have hundreds of shows four or five hundred shows on the youtube channel and we come to you each and every week with a new show so again i'm jeff barton this is the mortgage voice and thanks for tuning in okay we've got n a number of different issues dealing with with the economy and dealing with inflation, but the major issue overhanging everything obviously is inflation, what the inflation numbers are, what they continue to be, uh, the conundrum that the economy as well as the Fed is under in terms of trying to solve the inflation riddle, whatever that riddle is. Normally it's supply and demand. And as we enter silly season, which is the political season in the U.S., we get a lot of uh, uh, crazy, not crazy, that, that that's such an overused word, no, just misinformed people who try to influence others with their misinformation. Whether it's one side or the other, it doesn't really matter. Uh, the main focus of inflation really is about things cost too much and I have to pay more than I did last year. That's the basis for inflation right there. Now, inflation happens all the time. A lot of it isn't negative. If your house price goes up, Meaning that I live in a house, I paid hundred thousand. Five years later, it's worth two hundred thousand. Well, that's good for me, and that's inflation. If I have a stock for portfolio or I buy some uh, investment that seems to go up ten, twenty percent a year, that's inflation. But these are good things about inflation. Now we've had inflation on the good side for the past two or three years. The problem is, is that the bad inflation, which is my food costs more. That car costs more, the gasoline costs more, rent costs more, mortgages cost more, among many other things that cost more. Services, for instance, your financial services sector, which I'm involved with, yes, that costs you more today than it did two years ago. These are the bad things. Most people who look at their weekly paycheck, which has really, you know, it's gone up 4 or 5% on average for most people. If you've gotten a new job, you will see that you have more benefits now than you would have been offered two or three years ago. However, if inflation outpaces what you're making or what you're going to make, that's bad inflation. And that's what's happening. And that's what's going to rule a lot of people when they go out and make decisions, either getting a mortgage or uh, voting for the candidate. It's going to come down to, really, how much more am I paying today and who am I going to blame for it? All of those things being equal... Let's get into some of the numbers of exactly what I'm talking about for mortgages and what I'm talking about for real estate. The 30-year fixed rate today is at 7.12%. Perspective, in January, it was 3%. So you can add that up. That goes up 4%, over 4% in 10 months. That is unprecedented. It's it's the type of thing whereby you're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm paying for 360 payments on this mortgage. And that's 4% that I'm going to be paying more today than I was at the beginning of the year. Makes you want to cry, especially if you're in a situation where you're a new home, um, you're a first time home buyer. You got a new family. Yeah, you got a new job. You're both working. But how are you going to afford the next step in the, uh, process of raising kids, right? 
You got, first got to get them into a school, hopefully a good school. If not, you got to go private. That costs money. Then you got to get them into high school or private high school. That costs money. Not to mention this, you know, the tutors and uh, uh, food and clothing and everything else. And then you go to college, and that's ridiculously expensive unless you go the community college route, work, go to college that way. So all of these things are going to cost you money. And that inflation that continues to confound both the Fed and any policymaker out there. Because as we all know, let's look at that core inflation. Year-over-year year inflation is up 8.2%. 8.2%. That's unbelievable. Uh, last month, it was 8.1%. month before, it was 8.5%. So we have stubbornly high inflation. Back to what the real estate uh, mortgage rates. 15 years, at 6.33%. FHA is at 6.60%. 6.08% for the... Jumbo and 6.32 for the five one arm. The two-year treasury. Now, a lot of people are saying, look, we are going to see over the next 10 years. A lot of people look out that far. Why? Because they want to see what the average is. I mean, if you look back 50 years, you will see an average of what inflation is, what it has been. It's a pretty low number. Even though recently, over the past six, six seven months, maybe a year, inflation has been, you know, obviously where it is today. But if you look back historically and if you look ahead um, into the future, they're looking at 2% as the long-term inflation rate. And they're thinking because of the fact that not only is the Fed dealing with this by trying to cool down the economy, lower demand, what they call demand destruction, all these fancy terms, these sort of hip, hipster terms that they use for the economy, they're trying to make it more expensive so you can't afford it. Therefore, the demand for products will go down. Therefore, they'll have to lower the prices in order to have anybody buy it. Now, that's what demand destruction is instead of just saying what it is. Uh, but that's an issue. That's an issue not only for uh, us here trying to figure out what the mortgage rates are going to be. Like if we kill demand on housing, what are mortgage rates going to be? It doesn't necessarily mean that the mortgage rates are going to come down. Usually mortgage rates come down when the economy is in bad shape, and the economy is in bad shape when we're in a recession. That's second half of the show. We'll talk about that more. Inflation being what it is, uh, let's see. We've got the two-year at 4.43%. So a lot of people looking out 10 years saying at 2%, if we're saying that, well, you can buy a two-year bond right now at 4.4%. So if within a year we have inflation under 4.4%, that's a win for you. And if you're money's in the bank right now, you're losing about 8% a year. That's not good. So if you could make up half of that, that's probably good too. So two-year bonds are a good deal. What's the 10-year doing? The 10-year bond is almost at 4%. Another good deal. So there are investment people in markets, right? This is what this is what money does. It gives you choice to what you want to do. Now, most people out there, like me, going to school, trying to learn a certain skill, which I'm doing right now, I'm at a deficit. I am really behind the eight ball. Anybody that is trying to switch careers, move into a different thing, or learn something new knows when you're at a deficit, you basically know less than you have to know. When you're a deficit financially, you owe more or aren't making enough in order to get to where you want to go financially. Buy a house, do a uh, mortgage, whatever it is else you want to do. But the financial markets are saying, look, you've got some money. Maybe you take money out. Maybe putting it into bonds, the 10-year or the 2-year at 4% is a good deal for you because we see inflation not where it is today in six months, in a year, in two years. This is what a lot of financial analysts are saying. But how does this affect you if you're trying to buy that first-time home, if you're out there looking around for real estate? Again, we'll get to that very, very soon. Okay. One of the things about inflation, one of the things that we're trying to do with the supply and demand side is figure out exactly how we can lower prices, not only for people who are producing, but also for people who are you know, buying. 44% uh, of Americans believe that price gouging is a major part of what inflation is. It costs more money for stuff. Why does it cost more money? Quick, quick anecdotal story. I get acupuncture done occasionally. Some people like it, some people don't. It works for me. So when I called my acupuncturist and asked, hey, you know, uh, can you, uh, can I come by your office? And well, oh, I closed my office. Oh, okay. Are you still doing it? Yeah, I'm doing it. I come to the house. Okay, fine. 
but it's uh, uh, it's three hundred dollars. I go three hundred dollars. Okay. So I hung up the phone and I said, okay, cut your cost by moving out of your office and you doubled the price. That's what I'm talking. A lot of people are thinking is really at the core of this inflation issue. Anyway, we'll get to the rest of it. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show. Each and every week, we bring to you some interesting guests, interesting information. But if you want to hear us, uh, you can go to our podcast. Are we up for the podcast list, Daryl? You betcha. Okay. <laughs> what is it? It's Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Spreaker, Stitcher, iHeartMedia, Radio.com, YouTube, Podclips.io, and of course, The Mortgage Voice. Excellent. Thank you very much. You know, I heard a segment of our show on SoundCloud as well. Very interesting. Yeah, it it, it just sort of multiplies out there. Yeah, exactly. So if you're out there and you want to hear something about mortgages each and every week, you can go to any of these different podcasts. Just dial us in. We've got historical as well as current shows uh, in their archives. And uh, again, we really appreciate you listening. I am Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice. Okay, so uh, uh, we have, uh, again, uh, Terrell has been on the show many, many times, and uh, I welcome him again from TDR Financial, uh, Terrell Robinson. Terrell, how are you? Hey, Jeff, how you doing? Hey, thank you again for having me on, man. I love being on your show. Uh, That's interesting. Thank you very much. You know, uh, for those of you, and, and maybe you want to just uh, shout out a little bit about uh, where you're broadcasting your own show. You've been doing it for a while now, so I uh, thought I'd give people an opportunity to listen. Uh, where is your show broadcast? Absolutely. It's out of Las Vegas, Nevada, uh, KCEP 88.1 FM and also 91.5 in Tyler, Texas. So in two locations, nice. uh, we're actually broadcast. Nice. Um, uh, just a quick aside about that. Uh, the meeting itself, how, how have you found it to be successful for what you want to do? And, um, you know, do you like being on the radio? You know what? I actually like it. A lot of people have told me that uh, I have the voice for it or, uh, you know, the comment for it. I, I really do like being on the radio. You know, I don't I don't have to show my face, so, but I can hide <laughs> behind the screen. Yeah, I love being on the radio, and it allows me to still get my voice out to uh, those out there that are, that are searching and seeking for the information to be able to put themselves in a better position. Let, let's talk about that a bit, little bit. Uh, economy, uh, we're not quite sure what it is. Uh, is it growing? Is it slowing? Uh, the interest rates for mortgages are up. Obviously, the short-term borrowing for the Fed is up as well. How does it affect your business? Uh, uh, for those of you who don't know, Terrell's in the uh, insurance, life insurance primarily, but also financial instruments business. Uh, tell us a little bit about how the economy and what's going on with interest rates is affecting your business. Absolutely. So, I'm, me personally... The interest rate has affected, uh, you know, especially in the real estate and the mortgage industry as it pertains to refinance. You know, I'm actually getting my parents' uh, loan done today. They just got their appraisal done today. But this is what I'm doing. For those that are listening, what I want you to do, and this is what I do with my clients, uh, try not to be so much as rate conscious because I'm going to tell you why. If your rate, that the rate that you have on your home is 2%, 3%, whatever that rate is, I want you to calculate the actual interest and principal payment. And that 3% rate, you will not see that payment until about the 29th year that you've been in that home. So now that you know that, kick the rate out the door. And what I mean by that is if you have consumer debt, car payment, uh, credit cards, student loans, et cetera, let's say $2,000 a month. And now Malibu Funding just did a cash out refinance. And they were able to pay off all your consumer debt. Yes, your mortgage payment went up 500 bucks, but you just gave yourself a pay raise of $18,000 a year. Who do you know is getting a pay raise for $18,000 a year? And now once you figure that out, what to do with the $18,000 a year, now the clients don't care about the 6 and 7% interest rate anymore because they have a plan in place. And that's what we're doing with our clients. Well, uh, so it's been helping us out quite a bit. Well, what, one thing about real estate is that the real estate, uh, there's, there's a lot of different ways you, you can uh, take advantage of owning real estate. Uh, one of the things that you can't take advantage of is a car loan. 
because that car is going to go down in value the day you buy it, or if you, even if you buy a used car. I mean, it's going to go down in value, and those payments remain the same. So savings on a car loan or savings on student debt, any kind of short-term loan that you might be taking, I can see why that calculation that you're asking your clients to do will work out as a benefit if they don't continue to, to borrow um, money. I mean, credit cards being what they are, 30%, that's also a, a huge concern. How do you talk to your clients about that? Well, one of the, one of the things that we do, uh, and just like you said, a great uh, great comment in regards to the depreciating asset in regards to that vehicle. We let them know now that we paid off that vehicle that it just became an asset, even though it is a depreciating asset, but now that it's paid off, it is an asset. Now, right. also, your, your credit just went up, so now you have put yourself in a position for leverage in regards to negotiating your uh, credit cards, getting a lower rate, etc. Now, uh, what we do is the market has been, you know how it's been for the last couple of years. I do. So I, I sit down with our clients and our slogan, who do you want to protect your financial blind side? I sit down with our clients and I have a growth and income fund now as well as the infinite bank, the three agendas that I'm pushing. And with our growth fund for my last 10 years has been averaging 15% with the zero floor. My at best 10 years is 22.97% with the zero floor. So if you are putting money in a qualified plan, 401k, you are throwing good money after bad money. You need to stop. What you need to do now is whatever money that you're putting into your qualified plans, that money needs to be going towards your savings. So another pandemic or whatever the case may happen, now people are not reaching into their retirement accounts to pull money out because the money that you pull out is not going to be that number. You want ten grand, but now you got to sell the shares. Right. you got to pay early 10% penalty plus your capital gains taxes. So 30% is gone. Now you actually net at seven. And then the following year, you're going to get something called a 1099 saying that, hey, taxes on this account or whatever tax bracket it may push you in. So allow us to put you in a... A safe haven, so we can put your savings at initiation where you have at least nine months to a year set aside. So if something does happen, you can go directly to that savings, and it's going to be tax free too as well. And then we also show you how to attack the debt. But the biggest thing is being able to build your financial empire without paying any extra money that you're currently already paying. Meaning that Jeff, most people are paying an extra couple of hundred bucks on their credit cards or right. going out to eat, we pull those money back from them. So what? Was, so are you asking them not to spend and you're putting them in a different investment vehicle or at least a savings vehicle? Is that what you're doing? It, it, exactly. I call it hunting. Let's say, for example, Jeff, Jeff Barton, his, his bills are $4,000 a month. Let's say Jeff Carnot is 500 bucks a month, but he's paying 600 bucks a month. Let's take $100 away. You don't need to be giving $100 away. You don't need to be giving $100 more to that finance company because we want to we wanna now benefit Jeff and his family, not a uh, Capital One auto loan. Uh, your credit card, the minimum payment is 50 bucks, but you're paying 150 bucks. I take $100 away because the infinite bank is going to do the heavy lifting for you. And then it's going to put you in a position to where you can borrow from yourself, and then you'll be able to pay off all the consumer debt and it didn't cost you anything, and then you determine if you want to pay yourself back or not. But here's the key. Once you have paid off that consumer debt, ladies and gentlemen, very important. If your bills, if you paid off $2,000 in consumer debt, continue to keep paying the $2,000 a month because it will position you to be able to retire a lot faster and a financial position. So my wife and I, our cars have been paid off for three years, so we still make a thousand dollar car payment every month on the first of every month. Okay, so how did, how, pay, let me let me just stop you there for a second because most people aren't disciplined. Let's face it, they're not. That's why they're in debt. How do you get them to be disciplined in order to not only pay off the debt without incurring more debt, but to also continue to payment? Are you there? Do you stand with them? Do you send them reminders? How how do you get yeah, them? That I do, and I send them I send them little gift cards or certificate. Okay. Hey, hey, congratulations. I see that you just paid off the vehicle, that $500 a month. Hey, look what happens if you continue to keep paying that $500 a month for the next four years. Look what happens. Now look what position you're going to be in. Look, 
you gave Tampa one auto loan, five hundred dollars a month for three years. Why wouldn't you not pay Jeff Barton five hundred dollars a month for three years? And when they see that, when they see the numbers, now they're like, "Wow!" And I'm not making them come out any extra more money that they're already currently paying. We still got them at four thousand dollars a month, but now we got two thousand dollars a month that's going towards the Barton family versus going towards Capital One or Quicken Loan or whomever else it may be, Sally Mae. So now when they see that, hey, I can retire at 59 versus 68. Excellent. And then they hey, see the big numbers they go I, I'm up against it. That's just, just great information. I want people to get a hold of you. How do they do that? Yes, you can reach me at area code 702-751-5865. Again, that number is 702 751 Five eight six five. We we uh, want to thank you so much, Jeff. We've been having a lot of outpour in regards Great. to that strategy, and that- it helped us out quite a bit. Terrell, thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. It's great information. I hope people get a hold of you. You can do these kind of financial um, uh, workings with them all over the country. Make sure you uh, you know get to the most people you can. And I really appreciate you coming on the show. Hey, thanks a lot, Jeff. I really appreciate you guys, and keep up the great work. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, too. That's uh, Terrell Robinson from TDR Financial. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show. You know, we come each and every week. We bring to you information about what's happening in the mortgage world, as well as some of the affiliates and the places that we do business. Albuquerque, New Mexico is one of them. But prior to getting to that, I just want to let you know that if you really want to see the show, you can go to our web our, um, our website. It's uh, themortgagevoice.com. On that MortgageVoice.com website, you can see and hear all the guests on this particular show as well as many other shows. You can see and hear them, contact them directly, as well as listen to some of the latest episodes. That's TheMortgageVoice.com. I am Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice. Okay, so from Albuquerque, uh, Guy's been on the show several, many times, I guess, uh, talking to us about what's going on down in Albuquerque. Our affiliate down there is uh, Richard Green from New Mexico Real Estate Company. Richard, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Okay, give us the 411. What's happening down there now that prices have really um, taken their toll? What are we seeing in real estate prices, first of all, availability, housing, and uh, the mortgage rates down there? How is it affecting your market? So, uh, of course. Of course, it's affecting. uh, It affects it all in in, in so many different ways. But just kind of right right at the top top of the topic is, Interest rates, interest rates have uh, uh, gone up here, and that, that does hurt some potential buyers. The values, you see a lot more seller concessions. We're seeing okay. uh, sellers willing to pay some closing costs. We've been doing a lot of uh, permanent buy-downs. We're trying the sellers, so sellers not necessarily wanting to slash prices of the houses, much more wanting to incentivize a buyer, so maybe a permanent buy-down or paying some closing costs. Um, housing inventory has creeped up, but nowhere near where we need to be. So our, the, the values are still, you're seeing days on market. So a house listing days on market is, is grown a little bit. Right. But the prices are still um, pretty pretty steady, pretty steady. Steady. There, there had been some pent up demand still, so that's kind of uh, working its way through. Uh, but it, but it, it with, with any with any cycle, this one is gonna. Uh, it, it takes a minute to get used to again, just because we're all we've been we've been all so fortunate to have like interest rates at such extra historic lows that a six, a five, six, or seven shocks us. Which right, um, yeah. Okay, well, uh, yeah. g- give me your opinion. Um, inflation or interest rates on home loans, which is affecting your buyers more? I, I At the end of the day, I think it's inflation. I think people are really looking at their budget right. about what they're earning, and, and I think there is some capacity, but people are worried. People are worried about energy crisis, the war in the Ukraine. There's so many other factors that really do make people nervous. 
uh, about buying a home or extending themselves, but I really, my two cents is inflation is more detrimental than interest rates. And and as a result of that, um, do you find that uh, a different kind of buyer in the marketplace, um, not throwing caution to the wind, but certainly somebody who's willing to take on not only the financial risk, but also, as you said, the uncertainty of what's going to happen in the future? So, uh, Albuquerque is um, the, the median home price is is two sixty five three hundred thousand and uh, those houses are you can't find a nice two hundred and fifty thousand dollar home right. in Albuquerque anymore and that that's a lot of our 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 economy Albuquerque's economy really. Uh, based on wages, uh, there's a lot of folks that can't afford 250, but really can't afford 300 or three and a quarter. Which right. is, we've seen a lot of this jump here lately, and then you throw in a six percent rate, and it 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 slowed down. It, things have slowed down based on this formula, and then even the midterm elections, and yep. and, yep. and, and it, there's so many things that I uh, I am that that just play into everyone's life. Yeah, I think I think the psychological effects of everything that's gone on, especially the last two years, it just seems like it's really piled on. And now you take away the low interest rates on mortgages, it really disincentivizes a lot of people, especially young people, people who want to start a family, people who want to get into it. Uh, but that brings me to the next point is uh, rents. How are rents out there? I, I heard that the rents are uh, equally as high as real estate prices. Rent, rent, so we, Albuquerque, Albuquerque is one of these towns that have been in Albuquerque 30 years that even this is the first time I've seen rents take the jump of all of our neighboring states. I mean, because Arizona's been high, Colorado's been high, Texas right. has been high. And we finally looked up during the pandemic supply and demand, and our, our, Rents, I don't want to say quite double, but in some places things are at least up thirty five percent, which wow. is a big jump. Yeah, big jump. which is yeah. If you're paying six fifty. That six fifty apartment is literally now a thousand bucks, which might it, 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 for so many people that's a big jump. Yeah, that's a big jump, and having people being able to afford that, especially if you're in a town like you said, you have a median income of a certain number, but rising costs in housing and fuel and inflation really cuts whatever your you know discretionary income down to almost nothing so how is the economy doing uh are people still out there spending money in order to support restaurants and new cars and other things to keep the economy rolling i, I from what from my yes i i see everyone still trying and then albuquerque is getting other higher paying jobs that we've never really had. We've had a big government sector, but right. now there's a whole bunch of other, like even uh, I mentioned the movie industry, which ebbs and flows in Netflix and a lot of auxiliary buildings. And then there's a big uh, satellite company that set up shot here, three, four, 500 people. And for a town of, for a city of a metropolitan city of maybe a, a million people, that's now 500 new families that are now making very good money that, the interest rates and the um, and the sales price is not as important to them, and, and people uh, um, know that and and, uh, and price accordingly. In in our industry, in the real estate and mortgage industry, we've seen a lot of layoffs, a lot of people, uh, you know, just moving to a different industry. Do you see in your area any of that? Um, uh, I, I just it, look. It, Go ahead. Yeah, it's happening. It's yeah. all it's it's all it's all happening. And as as so many other companies now, we're spread out across the United States, and we have different um, uh, fulfillment centers and operation centers scattered throughout the United States as a as a company as a whole. And and those uh, there there have been some uh, some downsizing, some uh, yep. some layoffs just because of production. It's it, it's 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 uh, you have all these people, but there's no work, if you will. Right. No, I agree yeah. with that. Personally, how's your business doing? What What are you doing locally to try so, to generate? Personally, we're we we are we are we're doing good. We, we've been a very purchase minded 
company, so we're we're hanging in there. And then, of course, these are the times that you explore other avenues of business that you maybe uh, didn't explore uh, before. Like we're 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 going out of out of the Albuquerque area down down south to Artesia, Carlsbad, Roswell, okay. and um, honing in on some underserved markets, uh, which is helping is which is really helping us. What what do you do when you when you have a first time home buyer? They're looking for a house. They're a little discouraged. Uh, are you spending more time with your buyers than you used to? Are you are you more of a buyer or a seller company? Well, we're very much always been a a, a, a buyer's company. Okay, and educating and helping right. and getting a game plan, um, credit challenges or just roadmaps. I mean, my whole career has been uh, a little bit of education and roadmaps and. Here's the, it's never a no, it's here's what we need to do to get to a yes. Okay. So here's, here's, here's what we need to do. Here's the, here's the strategy. Oh, excellent. Hey, listen, we're up against it right now, but I want people to get a chance to give you a call. Uh, you, you're so knowledgeable. You know what's going on in the market, and you have years of experience. Let people know how they can get in touch with you. Yeah, the, the, the best way is to feel free to call me directly on my cell phone, which is 505-228. Two six one zero, and it's New Mexico Mortgage Company in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And you can always visit our website, nmmortgagecompany.com. Richard, thanks once again. I really appreciate you coming on. You always come on with a great attitude and great information. Thank you. Thank you. Good talking. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's Richard Green from New Mexico Mortgage Company. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. We'll be right back. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in to the show. You can see the show. You can hear the show. You know, we do a LinkedIn, Facebook. We also do some Instagram one minute mortgage uh, minute shows that we try to get out there at least once or twice a week. Uh, we find those areas and those places by which we can get you that information. So what I'm saying is you can find me, Jeff Barton, the Mortgage Voice on LinkedIn, on Instagram. Uh, my Twitter handle is at Jeff6493. All of these major and even some of the minor um, social media companies are a, are a great way to spread the word. Uh, I get so much feedback from uh, those smaller venues. I mean, certainly YouTube is great, and we love doing the radio shows, and all of our podcasting is terrific. But if you want to hear and see us on a daily, that's where you can. I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice, and thanks very much for tuning in. Okay, we've been talking a lot to our guests as well as you know myself, talking about not only the economy, but what's going on with inflation, the war. You know, there's just so much elections. You know, people get charged up, and they get really... Uh, moved to do many, many things. Uh, one of the things that I, I think is really important when you're looking to buy a house or when you're looking to refinance is to do your research, to get out there, to look at information that is available. So I go to a number of different sources. Go to Housing Wire, go to the Mortgage News Daily, go to uh, uh, any of your major search engines, has a money section, go there. Uh, just find out where you can necessarily get not the best rate, but the best program available. We have non-QM, we have regular uh, conventional type loans. There's certainly uh, hard money if you need to get the property now and then refinance it. Yes, there are a number of different programs and we have on the show almost weekly a number of different loan officers, uh, account executives from lenders. Uh, today we had uh, a great guy, Richard Green, down there from uh, New Mexico talking about what happens uh, when they get problems, what happens when they need to actually solve problems for their clients. So let's get to a few other things uh, for the show. Let's see, industrial production is up 0.4%, the 10-year near 4% solid earnings growth. Okay, so we talked about the economy. This is one of the aspects of what's happening with the economy that we can't really sink our teeth into, yes, we'll be in a recession, no, we won't be in a recession. And that's really going to be the thing driving a lot of people next year in 2023 to whether they're going to buy a house or they're not going to buy a house. Um, I'm going to uh, have a couple of quotes here from a number of different people as to what is happening now, what will happen in the immediate or near future. Jamie Dimon from Chase. 
The economy, the economic disaster may be looming. Yes, what is he talking about? He's talking about the fact that the economy itself, because of the fact that we are now in a very strong tightening cycle, three straight point, uh, 75 basis point hikes by the Fed, um, means that what we're going to see is long-term damage to investment in uh, both companies as well as what we're trying to do in investment in corporations. Uh, and both of those things, investment in companies, investment in corporations, i.e. new plants, hiring new people, is going to affect unemployment once we get into the unemployment cycle, i.e. many millions of people out of work. And that's what he's talking about. Anyway, will that happen? Will it won't happen? Jimmy Diamond thinks it might. CNN says we're into a 1990-style recession. What does that mean? It means that in those days, we in 91, that's when I bought my house, and that's why I know this, uh, we were in what they call a mild recession. Now, what does that mean? Okay, so if you don't have millions of people laid off, maybe you have a million people laid off, and maybe you see uh, the demand for products uh, slip so bad that prices have to fall, and uh, a lot of what's happening in in your neck of the woods, either buying a house or trying to get a refinance, uh, is not as successful as it would be in a better, in a, a more upbeat economy. Uh, this is all economic news, not a good thing when you're trying to you know, get yourself uh, ready to buy a house. You're not worried about losing your job. And as I said in many shows in the last month, month and a half, you watch December, we're going to see a number of layoffs from a number of different com com companies. Uh, uh, talking to my wife at the dinner table. A lot of retail companies are right now closing, shuttering. 24-hour um, fitness, shuttering, I don't know, four or five hundred different uh, fitness. And now we talk about consumers, consumer spending, and that spending is actually pretty good and has been pretty good over the last few months. However, there are companies that are obviously not doing well, and uh, that is one of them. Uh, not Bed Bath & Beyond, but the other one, like Bed Bath & Beyond, uh, they're closing 400 stores. There's another one, uh, I don't know, there are four or five of them that she reeled off, which said to me, okay, so consumer services, what they're doing in retail, if we're seeing a number of layoffs there, and we're seeing a number, obviously, in the financial services section, mortgages and real estate companies, that means that a good third of the economy is going to show uh, signs, not only show signs, but have people laid off. That's not a good thing, uh, and this portends to what we're talking about. Forbes magazine, housing, um, yes, housing and mortgage recession happening right now. This is what Forbes says. Dr. Doom, a guy named Nouriel Rubini, and he's predicted many, many down, uh, down cycles in the past. Uh, the next decade could bring about massive insolvencies, meaning that companies that we used to look, look at some of the companies that were around 10, 20 years ago. Where are they today? Are we going to see that happen in the future? He seems to think so. Clear Capital lays off 27% of its workforce. Uh, Fannie Mae says that home sales nosedive in 2023. All of these things, all these people who are looking at what's happening now, predicting what's going to happen in the future. Now, I'm not a pessimistic person, but I'm not a stupid person either. Obviously, if you're seeing and hearing this kind of thing, you know that you're going to have to prepare, especially if you want to buy a house next year. What's the most exciting thing about that? You might see real estate prices fall. And uh, according to some of these people, real estate prices may fall as much as 10, 15, 20 percent. Now, in certain markets, that's a good thing because uh, you want to live in those markets and the prices in those markets are really not that high. But in certain areas that you do want to live, let's say you want to live in Southern California. Well, if you get a 20 percent uh, lowering of prices in Orange County, California, that means the median house price is 800000 That's still way above uh, what I can afford and probably what most people can afford. However, if you get a 20 percent uh, uh, reduction in home prices in Albuquerque, New Mexico. That means you're going to be spending uh, 200 to 250 thousand rather than 300 to 350 thousand. That may be a market that you can afford, especially with what's happening in rents and other things. Uh, if you are one of these people out there who are renting right now uh, and you're wanting to purchase, uh, the best thing I can tell you is that Fannie Mae is now accepting rent payments as uh, proof of payment, i.e., you. For instance, if you are buying a house and you already own a house, you have a mortgage coupon, a mortgage statement that shows you've been paying your mortgage. That affects your credit score and also affects your ability to uh, borrow again. Well, they're going to start to use rent 
exactly like that. So if you've been paying rent and you can prove that you've been paying rent either by check or uh, some kind of, uh, I think there is a form that you fill out by your landlord that uh, proof of rent payments over the past X amount of years, that works in your favor as it would, meaning that if you can pay your rent, you obviously can pay a mortgage and that's going to help you get that mortgage and that's a good thing. Okay, a couple other things going on. A couple of minutes left. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yes, okay. So when we talk about mortgage interest rates, when we talk about where they're heading, when we talk about at the end of 2022, if you are looking to get a mortgage right now, best thing to focus on is the monthly payment. Why? Because we're probably, if we do get into a recession, and we seem to have a lot of people think we might in the middle of next year, uh, probably going to see a, a rate reduction at that time. And so, therefore, if you get into a mortgage today, six months from now, you might be able to refi at a much lower rate. Or at least if you go from 7, 7.5% 7 down to 6 or 5.5%, 6%, that's going to save you a ton of dough if you can afford the monthly now. And obviously, you have to qualify for that monthly right now that you would be paying for 360 payments. But you will be able to look to refinancing when they uh, lower interest rates. And that always is what happens every time there's a recession for the past 20 to 25 years that I've been in the business. Anytime we're in any kind of recession, the first thing that happens is mortgage interest rates go down. The Fed funds rate also is lowered. They are not synergistic, but they do seem to follow each other one way or the other. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton. It's been a great pleasure to be here with you today. I really appreciate that and hope to see you soon. Um, we'll, see, we'll see you soon because I'll be right back. Anyway, thanks very much. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. We'll be right back with more in just a moment. For more information on today's topic, email Jeff Barton at info at malibufunding.net. Now, back to The Mortgage Voice with your host, Jeff Barton. Welcome back, everybody. I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning into the show. You know, you can see and hear us all the time in all kinds of different places. Our radio stations, we're in uh, Albuquerque at K-Mine, down in K-Mine con Country, excuse me. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada at um, KSHP K-Ship at 1400 AM. We're Tahoe, up in Tahoe, California, at K Tahoe, and in Southern California, where our hub is at uh, KCAA and KMET. Both of those great stations in San Bernardino and Riverside counties were also can be heard uh, on a number of other uh, podcasts as well. We'll get to that a little bit later. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton. This is The Mortgage Voice, and thanks very much for tuning in. Okay, we were talking earlier about what was going on with the economy and some of the macro issues. Uh, let's continue a little bit with that discussion. Um, okay, so... Chris Miller, who is an economist, uh, immigration eases wage pressures, austerity, cut services. The reality is that the uh, economy is in pretty good shape. Now, there are many indications saying that that's true. We had corporate earnings out uh, this week, which showed that uh, corporations were doing pretty well. We've had the, the really the seesaw, the up and down, the whipsaw, all that kind of stuff going on in the stock market, where we were, I guess the high was about 35,000, a little bit over, where just about... Uh, a couple ticks under 31,000. So uh, over the past, I don't know, year, year and a half, we've come down probably 4,000 points. But we now see a lot of volatility in that particular market. If you are a person who has been savings and has your savings in the stock market because you're looking to get a down payment in order to buy a house, well, you're a little bit worried right now because you want to you want to be able to use that as a down payment or at least security for the loan. But because the stock market goes up and down, uh, you're at a loss as what to do. Should you cash it out, put it in the bank, and then be able to use it as the down payment or uh, three, four, five, six months reserves, whatever the loan may cost, or do you leave it in there and hopefully it goes up so then you can use it for that? It's really a volatile market, and I don't know because I'm not in that business, but I do know that that money is used in real estate transactions all the time. It's something that not only people who are looking to get into real estate uh, buy an investment or a first-time home or maybe a step up or a step down in your home uh, in terms of buying and selling, but also people who are retired have all their money in the stock market, have a lot of their money that they are looking forward to being able to live off of in a very volatile situation as well. However, the economy is in pretty good shape, according to Mr. Miller. And do I believe? Yeah, I, I kind of do. I think that if we say 50% of the people out there are living paycheck to paycheck, means 50% of the people are not. So when that number gets above 50%, yes, we are in a more a trouble than we are at 50%. We're kind of like 
on the fence right now. It's the thing, same thing with inflation, same thing with the economy. We are in a recession. We're not in a recession. We're about ready to get third quarter numbers uh, by the end of the week. And, and they'll probably end up showing that the economy has grown. Now, we have a couple of indices that we look at when we're talking about uh, what the economy is doing and what it isn't doing. Uh, it's called the, the uh, tracker. Uh, and the GDP tracker that we've been following is the Bank of America, Goldman Sachs, and the Atlanta Fed. Well, the Bank of America GD, uh, GDP tracker has us up for the third quarter at 1.9%. Goldman has it up at 2.3%, and the Atlanta Fed has it up at 2.8%. We go to these numbers almost every end of every quarter just so that you can see before the numbers come out what exactly the uh, professionals are saying. Now, last quarter and the quarter before that, we saw uh, GDP actually fall below um, the marginal line or, or that line that indicates whether we're growing or shrinking. Uh, the classic definition of recession is two straight quarters of shrinking GDP. That means a negative GDP. Well, we're now going to see in all of these indications, and it's probably going to hold true in, in some particular way, a positive GDP growth. So what does that mean? We're out of the recession now, or were we in a recession? Again, it's 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 like the stock market. It's a lot like inflation. It's a lot like a lot of things going on right now. It's unclear. But one thing is clear is that the Fed continues to want to raise short-term interest rates and that's probably going to be another 75 basis points because we see unemployment continue to, uh, the employed rather, continue to, to rise. I mean, we're hiring more people. More people are working now. We have good employment numbers each and every month, and that's a good thing. But it encourages the Fed to be able to raise short-term interest rates even more because they're trying to cool the labor market. Uh, we still have 10 million jobs going unfilled all the time. Uh, and we've had that consistently for six to eight months. So if we have a strong employment uh, in the country, it really means that uh, the Fed has a free hand to raise uh, the short-term interest rates. And as they do that, they're thinking to quell, obviously, what's going on in inflation. Okay, let's get to a couple of other uh, just specifics in the market. Ten-year treasuries uh, over the next decade. Yeah, I, I talked about that in an earlier segment. Uh, close to Fed target of 2%. Uh, that's Matthew Graham has written that in Mortgage News Daily, which is a great website if you want to go out and follow what I follow each and every day. Uh, let's see. Let's see. California real estate sales off 30% year to year. Increase in price only 1.6%. Okay. Think about that for a second. We were, we were last month 14%. We're now 1.6% in California. Now, granted, the national average is up a lot more than that, but California has such up and down real estate markets all the time, it's very difficult to be able to average them into the country. Um, so top five uh, real estate markets in the country to lose sales year over year. Uh, number five is Boston, 25% down from last year. Dallas, Fort Worth, 29% down. Maryland, and they, I guess the entire state, 28% down. Sacramento, California, 28% down. And mid-Florida, 31%. Obviously, with the hurricane that they've had, that probably killed the market. No kidding. Not only killed the market, but nobody can borrow down there. And it's created kind of a vacuum. Uh, as carpetbaggers, uh, whoever they are and wherever they come from, they have flocked to that particular area. Home buyers flocked to Florida was a headline I read. Read a little bit about the article. It just said that because of the disaster, and I've been through disasters myself, my entire city burned down in 2018, and anybody in California will tell you the same thing. In Missouri, they'll tell you about floods. In Florida, it's hurricanes. Uh, there are disasters everywhere that takes its toll on the local real estate market. Well, in Florida, in, well, let, let's say, what, what Fort Myers, right? That was the, the town everybody saw underwater, and the huge surge came in, wiped out basically Fort Myers and, and a lot of the cities in central Florida. Carpetbaggers, people that come in there to, to try to scoop up properties at really cheap prices. Why? Because Florida real estate prices have actually gone up really dramatically over the past four years. And so for people to cash in on that, try to get something really cheap, especially people who didn't have flood insurance or who weren't covered in flood insurance, uh, we didn't cover that uh, a lot. But in Florida, it's very, very difficult to get flood insurance. I know in some parts of the country, it's very difficult to get fire insurance. Uh, some states have a, like in California, they have a thing called the California Fair Plan, which allows you to get fire insurance through a, uh, a state-run insurance pool. But in Florida, if you don't have 
uh, flood insurance, you might not be able to get flood insurance, which means if the ocean comes and you're now swimming in the ocean where your house used to be, you are not covered. So what do you do with your property? What do you do once the waters recede? And that's a real major problem down there. Home builder sentiment falls 8% to 38 in October from December. It's the lowest since 2012. There are a number of these indices that we talk about when we talk about what's going on in real estate and mortgages. Um, the indicators of assessing the market are really important in terms of what you need to do in order to assess for yourself. The industry uses these uh, very um, succinct measures. Okay, here they are, six of them. And if you're out there and you're thinking, just write this down, because you can go and find all this information. You become really well informed as to what's going on, indications in assessing the market. The Fed funds rate, everybody knows that's been going up. That's a great indicator of what is about to happen, i.e. demand destruction. Yes, we talked about it. The unemployment rate, our article talked about that. Unemployment rate is low, it's 3.6%. Watching that, if you get the reverse, Fed funds rate go up, kill demand, unemployment goes up, probably going to see inflation go down. Inflation rate, yes, we've all been watching that inflation rate month after month after month seems to be stuck at 8.5%. The uh, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment in Index. Listen, the economy runs on spending. If you don't spend, the economy doesn't go. So we look at consumer sentiment as to what is the expression of people who either want to buy or not want to buy stuff. And if it's if it's going up, that means we're probably not in a recession because people are feeling good about it and want to spend. And number six, S&P Cash Scholar Home Price Index. Yes, that's been going up, but it's now about ready to flip. And we've called her, and I'll talk about it a little bit further in the next segment, uh, about how that sentiment and how that actual fact of the uh, price for homes is going to go down. Anyway, I'm Jeff Barton, your voice in the mortgage industry. Thanks very much for tuning in. We'll see you next time. You're listening to The Mortgage Voice with Jeff Barton. For more on today's topic, visit www.malibufunding.net.